Good afternoon. Welcome into Mary's Kitchen today. It's a beautiful day here in Scotland. A nice day to be sitting out and getting some sun. Uh, but I thought that I would come on live today and make something out of my Mary's Kitchen cookbook, which I know a lot of you have already. And uh, this is an item. Who's coming on here? Hi, Daniela. Hi, and Karen Peterson from Australia. Nice to see you. Karen, you've got your book, right? Um, I'm going to make something I think that we're all going to be leaning towards is <laughs> after this lock-in is uh, my detox cabbage soup. And I have been making this for years and years and years. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Trisha and Rosalind. Beth. Hi, Aileen. Hi, how are you, Aileen? And Jennifer. Um, this is a recipe I have been making for years since practically probably since I was a kid almost, because my mom and dad took me to a very famous restaurant. Uh, hi Deborah, how are you? And Susan, oh you're snowing. Oh, my niece is in Canada, in Perth, Ontario, and she's just sent me a message to say it's snowing. No, snow, no to snow. Oh, thanks Karen. Karen's just saying she loves the book. Thank you, hi Della. Anyway, I wanted to tell you quickly, if I don't get a chance to say hello to you, it's not that I haven't seen you coming up on the screen, because I can see you. Hi, Susan. Everything back to normal in Florida, I guess. So I hear, I just got, just got off the phone from my friends in Treasure Island, um, just asking what, what was going on. So everything's going to be opening up. Ah, a bit scary. Hi, Paula. How are you? And the rain? Oh, it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day in America as well. I phoned up and wished my friend Gail a happy Mother's Day. But anyway, I'm going to do this recipe today out of my book. It's called Detox Cabbage, Detox Cabbage Soup. And um, while I'm making this, just one of my, on each of my recipes, I always write a tip. And on this one, this soup blends itself by adding any type of vegetable you wish. So I'm going to be using some potatoes. Oh, hang on, I forgot to do one thing. Uh, yeah, uh, just let me just drain these for a minute. Hang on. Yeah, I kept my potatoes in water there because I didn't want them going gray. So, hi, Leah. Anyway, for, hey, Wendy Richards. Hi. I hope it's warm down there where you are in Cornwall. And Jacqueline, how are you, love? Nice to see you. You'll be happy to be escaping out of your house now in there in Florida. Um, my mom and dad used to take me to this famous restaurant in Hamilton, Ontario called Martin's and they made the most fantastic cabbage soup I have ever had. Uh, so I, over the years, have mimicked that cabbage soup to finally get it down to what I exactly think they put in it. So I've got some fresh bay leaves here from my garden and some fresh rosemary. So I'm going to be putting them in there too. And uh, what I did this week, I had a big cabbage, or last week, and it was starting to go a little bit brown. So I thought, right, I don't want to uh, waste this. So what I did was I cut it up, and I parboiled it just for a few minutes, all right, till it got a little bit soft, and then I froze it. So I have two bags of frozen cabbage here that I'm going to be using for my dish today. And it doesn't matter that it's still frozen, because once it hits the hot water, it's just going to melt. Anyway, so who else is on? Ah, Wendy, there's no chili in this dish, but yes, you can put a red hot chili in here if you really would like some fire in your life. Hi, Carol. Oh, you've got cabbage in your... Oh, so you're going to make this today. Great. I'm so happy, Jenny. Good. And Carol. Yeah, this goes a long way, cabbage soup, and also it's great for lunch and it's great for dinner and serve it with some lovely, lovely crusty bread. And there you go. You've got yourself a really fantastic meal. Plus, it's really good for you. If you don't want to put potatoes in it, which I'm putting just normal, normal everyday potatoes, which I've cubed up here, and I've also left some big bits like this, um, because I, in my recipe I say two potatoes, and... Uh, what I've done is I had four potatoes and I've cut some like this and then I've cubed the rest of them because I like to get my teeth into a nice big potato like that when I'm eating my soup. I prefer a chunky soup rather than a, a whizzed up soup. 
Um, I don't know if you're the same, but how are things in isolation? Are you out and about now? Hi, Lisa and Suzanne. Oh, this sounds perfect for today. Well, funny, um, I know it's cold in some places. I know it's cold in Canada right now, or my niece is up there in Perth, Ontario, and it's snowing, and got a call from brother-in-law yesterday in Toronto, and he said it was very cold there. So I don't know what's going on. And Tracy, I think you live in Toronto, so I, you said the weather wasn't too bad the other day, so it seems to have changed quite dramatically over a short period of time. Hi, Emma! Emma, I just uh, got all that information out of my friend, what kind of wines they like, so I'm going to be in touch with you. Emma, Emma's got a beautiful uh, vineyard, Romeo Vineyards, there in California, so I'm going to be ordering some wine from her. Kathy Wilson, you might like that too. I'm going to pass the information on to you. It snowed last night, Mary. Oh gosh, where are you, Mary? Hi, Stephanie. You're nice and warm there. In Henderson, New York. Good. Oh, Deborah, I know. Poor Deborah. It's 100 degrees in Las Vegas. Oh, my goodness. That's warm. Too warm, actually. And snow and rain in Maine. And Kathy, hi. And Peg. Oh, you had a freeze last night in Iowa. Oh, my. And Pennsylvania. You. Oh, you're windy there today. Uh, Kimberly, hi, and Mary, oh, it's cold in New Jersey, is it? Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. I remember being in New York, mm, it was probably February, 1 February, and it was uh, Fashion Week in New York, and uh, I never felt so freezing from that Hudson River the wind coming off that. Oh my goodness, it was ice cold. <laughs> oh, 95 degrees in Napa. Emma, you lucky thing. Hey, Fiona. An 80 in Florida. Fabulous, Jackie. Wonderful. Well, listen, girls, let's get on with making this detox cabbage soup. As I said, it's here in Mary's Kitchen Cookbook. It's on page 20. Um, this uh, calls for uh, 1.5 liters of vegetable stock, which I just used good old Norse chicken stock cubes. All right, I'm using three of them for this. Uh, I haven't got any carrots, so I, I'm not using carrots, but as I said, my tip is that this lends itself to any of your vegetables that are kind of going out, but the basis of it is cabbage, obviously. I'm putting, uh, I've got four potatoes I'm putting in mine. An onion, a tin of chopped tomatoes, Salt, obviously. Well, I might not put salt in because I'm using the North Stock cube, so we'll see how that goes. You can always have salt yourself later. Bay leaves, peppercorns, and a whole cabbage. And then my secret thing, of course, is the juice of one lemon. It really, really zaps up the flavor and really makes it nice. Hey, Gail and Tammy, how are you girls? So, I don't know if my friend's there and um, if Kathy's come on yet, Kathy Wilson, but she probably will at some point. Sorry. Oh, what am I making, Tammy? I'm making detox cabbage soup. Now, don't worry. I haven't put the recipe up at the top, but what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to photograph this, and I'm going to put it in the comments. So don't don't uh, worry. You're going to have the recipe, all right? Although I usually put it up at the top. I thought I'd save a little bit of time today, and I can just photograph this for you and put it in the comments, all right? And if... if, if for those of you who have a copy of this, thank you very much. And for those of you who would like a copy of this, you just need to go on my website, which is www.maryjoancalder.com. Very simple, and it's very easy to purchase on there. Just a press of a button, in fact. <laughs> um, so, okay, let's get started. So, I'm going to put my liquid in here first, and this is my stock cubes. Uh, funny enough, this kettle measures out 1.5 liters of liquid, so I don't really even have to measure it in here. I'm just going to turn this on, just to show you how quick and easy this is to make. If you don't want to use regular potatoes, you can put sweet potatoes in here, but in saying that, they, sweet potatoes tend to mush up a little too much for my liking for this soup. So, you know what we're going to be doing, we're just going to be throwing everything in here, basically in a water. And I'm just going to top that up because I know that this is 
today so you can put three four carrots in here chopped in cubes or you can break them up if you want so I'm going to put uh, one green pepper all right I'm going to put a green pepper in here as I said this soup lends itself well to any kind of vegetable that you want to put in uh, my cabbage I'm going to put my cabbage in I'm just going to slip it right in here I've already parboiled this, but you can put fresh cabbage in. I only parboiled this because it was starting to go and I didn't want to waste my vegetables. All right. And I got another bag too, so I'm putting both the bags in. I think it was quite a good idea when I bought that, just to parboil it. And uh, just put it, you know, it's all ready. You can use it any time for cabbage soup. So it's all done. Put every bit in there. And I'm going to put some peppercorns. It says eight in the recipe, but I usually just put a little sort of teaspoon in, so there's a few more than eight, because I like the taste of heat, as you probably know. Uh, I'm going to put in, uh, I think about four celery sticks. Put them in. I'll just get that up next round. I've got my potatoes, so I'm going to put them in now. This is really, really delicious soup. But once it just gets all boiled down and the flavors all come through. Now, I'm going to put in a little bit of mixed herb. All right, now if you don't have any of these vegetables, you can basically, cabbage is your base. You could add zucchini, courgette if you want. Uh, you could add uh, some sweet corn in there if you wanted. Um, you could add some butternut squash if you wanted to use butternut squash instead of potato. That's quite a good alternative. And I'm going to put about a teaspoon of mixed herbs in there. I've also got a fresh bay leaf who's on here. Hi Terry, how are you? Ah, you're getting to watch me live today, I'm Bridget. Suzanne, hi, and Cindy. Hi Cindy, how are you? Hey, one of my friends showed me yesterday. Um, live, we were talking to each other on FaceTime or whatever it is, and uh, she showed me all the techniques for hula hooping. So I think I got it, I just gotta practice it. But I gotta wait till my leg is a little better, it's a little sore at the moment. Oh, good, Terry, I'm glad to hear you're doing good. Oh, Wendy, I'm so happy. Happy Mother's Day to all you ladies up there. I got a few more men on here too watching, which is terrific. Yeah, one of my friends in Canada, my brother's friend, Bill Brimer, he sometimes comes on and watches. Lucas sometimes comes on. Oh, Cheryl, very nice, from Columbus, Ohio. And Jeannie, hi there, and Suzanne, Bridget. Okay, I'm going to put two uh, bay leaves in here. Now, if you don't have fresh bay leaves, you can use dry. All right, that's not a problem. And also, I had some rosemary in my garden, so I'm going to put the rosemary, just put it in a clump so that you can pull it out later on. Now we haven't finished yet. Obviously this is going to have to sort of simmer. I'm bring it up to a boil first, okay? Always bring things up to a boil first and then turn it down to a simmer. I've got one more ingredient, two more ingredients to add here. Hi Carol, Albuquerque, New Mexico. What's the weather like there? Day one detox. Well, Jax, you could have had this, detox cabbage soup. You don't need to detox too much. Hey, Lou. Hi. And Lisa, snowing in London, Ontario. Oh, it's cold there today. My goodness. Uh, one tin of tomatoes, chopped tomatoes in here, okay? Oh, 
I had a a little tomato here uh, that was just going, and I was going to throw that in too. It seems to have disappeared, but that's fine. So if you have any sort of soft tomatoes, just throw them in here too. Just cut them in quarters and throw them in. Now this makes a really, really big pot of soup. I'm obviously going to have to photograph it afterwards, but I put a photograph on the event, and that is my cabbage soup there. That's exactly what it looks like. I wish I had carrots to put in here. There, it's starting to come to a boil now. I had to use uh, cooking indoors today. I'll tell you why. My little induction uh, cooker needs a special pan, and that's that big one pan that I use. And this is my Le Creuset soup pot or sauce pot, whatever. And uh, obviously it doesn't work on the induction, which is unfortunate, or I would have been outside. But I might be outside tomorrow because I have another little idea. I'm trying to, um, I don't like things to go to waste. So I try to use things up as best I can. Hi Angie, hi Chris. Great to see you. From Marco Island, Florida. Oh, I wish I was there. <laughs> and Susan, hi Susan. How are you getting on? Not working today, obviously. I managed to sit out in the sun for a few hours yesterday. I think I'm going to try and sit out for a few more hours after I've done this video. Hi, Patricia. Okay, one lemon. What to do is roll your lemons or limes before you cut them, and then you'll extract a lot more juice out of them. All right? Even though we're using a juicer. Hi, Lori from California. Oh, it's been hot. Yeah, I can imagine it's hot in California. Okay, so I can actually feel the juice in that lemon, okay, and I can smell it. So, I'm going to squeeze, I put one the juice of one lemon in here, and it really does add to the flavor. It's really delicious. So if you like it, you can even put two lemons if you wanted to put them in. All right, hi Janet, and Mary, there you see you get all the juice out of the lime. I want to put the pulp in there too, because I love lemons. You know what? I think I might put two lemons, just because. No, I don't think I will, because I've only got two left there. No, I'll just put one. There we go. And that's basically it. Again, one pot cooking. And this is so substantial. It's such a substantial meal. You could even, if you wanted, I mean, this is what we call no meat made, so, but I do still eat a little bit of meat here and there. But you could even, if you wanted, at the beginning of the soup, instead of just throwing everything in the pot, you could get some uh, lovely chorizo. It would change the flavor of the soup, but it would be absolutely delicious with the cabbage. So you could fry your onions and your chorizo in the bottom and get that lovely chorizo oil coming out. Chorizo. And then you could start adding all your other things in your liquid. And then you get another different flavor coming through your soup. Really delicious as well. Because I like the taste of cabbage and chorizo. So, there we go. Um, I don't know if I can pick this up. I think I can. Hang on. Uh, I'm going to get some handles here. Some handlebars. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Just so you can see, right in my pot. Steaming hot. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And then you're just going to bring it up to a boil, and then you're going to let it simmer for at least a good hour after that. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Hi, Ann and Elka. Oh, you like lemon in your soup? Oh, yeah, you could. Oh, yes, apple cider vinegar is a great one, too. Yeah, Jenny, thanks for reminding me about that. In fact, I make my own apple cider vinegar. Um, I'm going to... Oh, I haven't got my homemade candy, but I... you could put a little bit of Bragg's in there if you wanted. It just gives it a punch, gives it a nice flavor. You could also, also add a chili if you would like to to this. Oh, thank you very much, Terry. Thank you. That's a lot of soup. Well, to be honest with you, when you make a detox pot of soup, like cabbage soup, you're usually having it for lunch and dinner. So that's going to be probably about maybe six, 
seven, eight bowls of soup, I would say there, it's not bad. And I'm going to probably be eating it this evening. Hi, Tracy. How are you? You cold there in Canada? <laughs> You're welcome, Karen. As always, <laughs> I like cooking for you girls. Hi, Doris. Dorisabel. I love that name. Very nice. Hi, Suzanne. Oh, lemon and soup is lovely. And I'll tell you what I like to put in my lentil soup. When I make lentil soup, as I do like to put apple cider vinegar in my lentil soup. Mm, about a quarter of a cup, I would say. Just maybe, yeah, about a quarter of a cup. About two ounces. Hey, Betty, how are you? And Jeanette? Well, girls, thanks for coming on. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, the recipe, if you have my book, the recipe is available on page 20. And if you don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to photograph the recipe and I'm going to put it in the comments. So you just need to scroll down the comments and you'll get the recipe there, okay? Um, so thanks for coming on. And have a wonderful day. And remember, if you see someone without a smile, give them yours. Take care. Bye.